Well, you've heard of Super Sundays and Manic Mondays, but what about Frenetic Fridays? But even that term only goes some way to describe what transpired on Friday night, the final day of the regular season. Well, here to give us their views on an eventful night of football are Brian Kerr and Stewie Byrne. Well, Limerick were in Sligo, where they knew only a win would give them any chance of staying in the Premier Division. Drody United were away to Shamrock Rovers, and while they were two points better off than Limerick, they had to work on the grounds that Limerick might win in Sligo. It meant pressure was on Drogheda also to win on the final day of the season, and here's what happened. Here's the corner, they've taken it short. Turner, Duggan, oh, what a shot, what a goal, Shane Duggan the captain puts them in front in the fifth minute. A peach, an absolute peach, absolute quality. That's a captain's goal isn't it? Denny Corcoran's in here for Sligo perhaps, can Yuka's come out, he's bundled him over, that's a penalty, can Yuka bringing down Dinny Corcoran and a yellow card for the Congolese defender. Crazy. Twice, succe crazy. twice successful from the penalty spot, Dinny Corcoran. Oh! oh. Is denied by Freddie Hall. Well, it wasn't the greatest penalty, but Hall guessed correctly and gathered it in. It's Thornton then with this corner for Drogheda United. Flicked on by Byrne, and Daly at the back post. Murphy couldn't hang on to it, and draw to take the lead. 16 minutes in, the corner by Thornton, the header by Byrne, the save by Murphy, but Daly at the back post makes it 1-0. Brandon Mele, who's Craig, has got options in front of him, maybe options at the back post for Shamrock Rovers. Oh, it's in O'Reilly and it's gone in. Just one minute after scoring, Drogheda are level, disaster, as Burns clearance hits O'Reilly and ends in the back of the net. Headed away by Cawley, back in again by Duggan. Oh, crossbar, and a save, and it's in! Finally in! O'Connor makes it two. That was a, an incredible little sequence. Finally converted. And 27 minutes, and Limerick are two up. Great save by Brush, the first one, paddled back out, got up. Marvellous finish. 2 0, different class. Just past the half hour, and it remains at 1 1. Referee's given a free kick for Drogheda United, quickly taken by Sean Brennan. Here's Tim to Mulvena! Oh, brilliant finish by Mulvena to put Drogheda United back in front. Quick thinking by Sean Brennan, and what a cool finish by Tiernan Mulvena. Onto it comes Ward. Last attack for Sligo Rovers in this half, it's Ward. Ward into the danger zone, a chance here. Fury, there's one back. Sander Fury gets one for Sligo Rovers right on half-time. And Sligo back in it. Going to take it short. Tough for the chance to get one into the penalty area. Oh, and Alan Burns dragged down Connor Kenna. Penalty Shamrock Rovers. Danny North against Michael Slingerman. And North sends the keeper the wrong way. 54 minutes in. It's 2 2. Cheers from the Limerick fans. Uh, obviously, good news from Tala. They seem to think that things are going their way. Duggan to return it into the danger zone, a little glancing header there by Fahirdy, it's in! It's in! Fahirdy gets it! It's 3-1 Limerick! That's quality, my man, 3-1, brilliant. He is Limerick's top scorer, that's his 12th goal. Mele. That's the return ball. Chance to land up the shot from Mele. Good save, Slingerman. Oh, and Danny North following in. And Shamrock Rovers have taken the lead. Disaster for Drogheda. The shot from Mele. The save from Slingerman. But North with the easy follow up. Here's Thornton. Good turn away from Connor Kenna. Oh, a great chance to level things up, but he's missed it. What a chance that was for Thornton. 
Here's Kira Marty Waters. He's on as a sub, and what a finish. An easy one, too. 82 minutes gone. Rovers lead 4 2. Here's Lee Duffy. Oh, what a finish from Duffy. The substitute has made it 4 3. 88 minutes gone. Well, deep into injury time. Shamrock Rovers still leading by four goals to three. And North tumbles. Oh, referee McKeown has given another penalty. He didn't see much in that, but he pointed straight away to the spot. And Sean Thornton may have talked himself into trouble here, and he's off. A straight red card from referee McKeown for arguing. And Sean Thornton goes to the line. Here's Danny North. Chance for his hat trick. Cool as you like. He makes it 5 3. And North's hat trick. Three minutes for Martin Russell to wonder has he got two more matches in this season? Off! Oh, there's a goal. Rory Keating scores his very first goal for Sligo Rovers. There you go. We've got it all tonight now. And that's it. All over. Referee Dave McKeown calls the end of the contest. And Drogheda United are relegated. Shamrock Rovers 5, Drogheda 3. There's time for no more. It is all over. And Limerick are in the playoff. And Drogheda go down. What a night in Sligo. The first time since 1991 that Limerick have won a league match in Sligo. And they chose tonight to do it. To save their Premier Division status for at least another week. They can now celebrate tonight it's just finished at Tala Shamrock Rovers have beaten Drogheda and sent them down and Limerick are in the playoff after the most remarkable night's nice football here in Sligo and beyond final score in the showgrounds Sligo Rovers 2 Limerick 3 quite literally they live to fight again You've done what you've had to do, you've won here, which is not an easy thing to do, and now it's Finn Harps on Monday. Yeah, listen, we're still alive, um, the escape is still on, so a credit to the players, they were magnificent again tonight, and the, and the supporters of Limerick, you know, the same when we played away in Galway and in the home support in Marketsfield, um, they've been excellent and, you know, we'd like to do it for them. Momentum is massive, like, and we, we got that, and uh, even the bigger teams that when we didn't win, I think we gave them games. I mean, we were very disappointed uh, last week not winning, I mean, and that's probably a testament to how far we've come. Good luck to uh, Limerick, first of all. I thought they deserved the victory. No, no complaints about that. Um, probably a game too many for us. You know, we, had, we probably had a, our cup final last week. Overall, it's the season down light. We're, uh, we're bottom, bottom for a reason. And, um, you know, we've got to bounce back. This club, everybody's got to bounce back. And it's very disappointing, yeah. And it's interesting to know, I think that's the first time Rovers have come from behind in about three years. Mm. So that shows, you know, we, we've got to have a bit more about us than that. Um, you know, I just said that at the end, you know, we, we, you know, this club has got to be up higher than where we are and competing right to the end, you know, and that's what we've got to look, look at next season. In the end, it was just too much, but it's not all down to, to this game or the last three or four games. It's, it's the whole season and, um, you know, we haven't been consistent enough. Um, and like everyone says, the league don't lie. And uh, unfortunately, we're the team to get relegated. Yes, uh, Limerick get their lifeline with that victory at the showgrounds over Sligo Rovers and Drogheda United are relegated. So, Brian, we'll talk about Drogheda first because ultimately they're the ones who would be playing first division football next season. But one of the issues on the night against Shamrock Rovers was that they were able to get in front, but they couldn't hang on to their lead. Yeah, and Peter, overall, I mean, they conceded the second highest number of goals and having just gone ahead in such a, a crucial game, they've given themselves a bit of a chance at Shamrock Rovers they're too loose, they're disorganised, and then there's an unfortunate bit of bad luck there. Alan Bourne tries to clear it, and it, it, it clatters off, and Robert O'Reilly goes into the net. But in the midfield area, they were far too uh, loose, no challenges. You see it here again, not enough pressure on the ball, Rovers playing it around at will, and they actually look like the team that has not much to play for. Drogheda had everything to play for. No reaction again when the ball comes back off the goalkeeper. I mean, Stuart made the point tonight to play at Pats that they didn't play with enough desire or passion. And that, that was very much the case in the Shamrock Rovers match as well. When you see them conceding goals so easy like that here, they conceded at the end of the season, the last three games, if they'd won one of them, They'd have, they'd have stayed, stayed up, up. Yeah. but instead they lost 2 1, 3 0, 5 3. So they've lost 10 goals in the last three games. It's just not good enough. And overall, the season, 
they were the lowest scorers, they, won, they uh, lost the most games, and they were the, the second highest goals against. So, you know, they can have no complaint on that. They didn't get enough points, and they need to regroup. They need investment in the club to try and give whoever the manager is next season a decent team that he can put together a squad that's good enough to get them out of the league. And they need someone to do something with the ground as well. The FAI own the ground, and it's in a horrible state. It, it needs investment. It needs tidied up. It needs, it, it needs someone to look after it that cares yeah. for draw to get back. A lot of rebuilding has to take place in, me, in, in many ways uh, at Drogheda United. They fall on the relegation sword and it has emerged since, Dewey, that uh, the day after they were beaten 6-0 by Dundalk, that eight players failed to turn up for training. Now, we were aware of that uh, yeah. even before Mick Daly, the captain, tweeted it, but mm -hmm. that's a, a dreadful reflection on some of the players. Yeah, I think what it does, Peter, is it, it gives us an insight into um, a little bit of the the mentality of the players at, the, at that particular time and um, maybe the attitude. Um, something that we, something I probably would have picked up on um, even in the run-up to the, to the Dundalk game. Believe it or not, I felt even in the, the Dundalk game they played quite well. Um, they were beaten 6-0 in that game before. The first 30 minutes, 35 minutes of it, they looked energetic, they looked strong and um, they kept Dundalk at bay. Then Dundalk went to a diff different gear and, and you know gave them a total drubbing. And it's 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 you know, listening to what Michael Daly has said uh, since, it makes an awful lot of sense because they, they just they just seem to to drop everything after that yeah, game. Yeah, but they came out after the next two matches the and got two, two good draws. Bowes. They got a two all with Bowes the next week. I don't know who played, whether the first that didn't train didn't play. But they got a two all yeah. draw. It was a very decent result because Bowes have done so well over. And then they got a draw with Cork. But as the problem out, was Brian, the last three games. The last three games, games think, cost them dear. I yeah, think when Brian was mentioned there, the, 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 the kind of the body language in the Rovers game. Um, I know you spoke about the two all draw, and it was a it was a wonderful quality goal from Tracy in the, in, in the game. Um, from outside the box, but the, the game after the Pats game, the one that we showed live on television, there was a huge difference in the squad. The body language just wasn't there. Um, yeah, they kind of played with a certain shape, but you could just you could just tell that there was big big problems. And I think they put too much emphasis on the following game against Longford, the one that they were they played at home. Got a man sent off at the nine minutes, beaten three 0 um, they were ultimately gone after that. Yeah, I mean, they've paid the ultimate price. Limerick, on the other hand, Brian, they seem to take the relegation battle very seriously. While they did stutter towards the end, I suppose you have to look at what happened with them over the last 12 games where they picked up seven victories, and that was the key for them to get out of it, wasn't it? Well, there's an extraordinary turnaround. Yeah. To get to match 21, uh, have not won a game, have six draws, it really was extraordinary, and it was very hard to predict that that was going to happen. But was, fair yeah. play to them for, for sticking with Martin and for Martin's belief in the players he had and putting the team together that could produce results and get goals and win matches. I mean, they, for a period, they were winning matches, but they were scoring a lot of goals and conceding. Towards the end, they were able to do a little bit better and tighten it up. But great win for them in Sligo at the end and giving themselves the chance. Meanwhile, Sligo now have the, the problem again. Mickey Adams having announced that he was leaving today. They've got to go in search of a, a new manager. So... Sligo have lots of work to do in the off season, don't they? They do, yeah. Because I think one thing that's become clear there is that the, the, that you know that team that entertained us for so long won the league, and um, you know wonderful cup team as well. It, it, it's long and truly gone, and it's now time for the club to kind of really transition, start bringing through some young, younger players. Need to get in some good, experienced players as well, maybe to kind of a bit of a mix. Um, I think the, the, the you know that team is definitely. It's run its course now, and it's time for somebody to go in. It's a great job. I mean, I mean, you get things going at Sligo, yeah. um, and the place will be hopping. Interesting. Just when you want to go back to Limerick, because only looking back at the table there from from the end of June, first 20 league games played, Limerick had six points. Yeah. Incredible. You know, it almost seems like that that um, third series of games was like a, a visual marker for them. They just suddenly kicked into another gear. Um, coincided with Freddie Hall probably coming in as well, but um, a wonderful achievement for them. Yes, so as we know, Limerick survived to face a playoff against the winner of Finn Harps and UCD. Well, they played the second leg of their 